Good morning, Lighthouse. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. This is a beautiful day to celebrate you all. I'm up here with my siblings, um, and we're going to introduce our mom. She's bringing the word this morning, and we're excited about it. We love her very much. She's the definition of a Proverbs 31 virtuous praying woman of God. And I can say that we are all up here today. We're doing what we're doing. We're serving the Lord because of her faithfulness, her praying, her sacrifices. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All the mothers, you all are the heroes. And we love you all. We just want to say to our mom, we love you so much. And we're looking forward to the word in Jesus' name. Could you give it up for her as she comes up and brings the word this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. Preach the fire. Oh my God, they messed me up. Right here. I forgot my water. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Let's give hand, a great hand for the Lord. Because if without Him, we are not mothers. That's why we have to surrender everything to him. And I thank him for another day of life that he still made me a mother today to be able to be in my children's life. I praise him in Jesus' name. Good morning, good morning, Lighthouse family. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We celebrate you today. You are the true heroes. And I want to honor today Bishop Dan and Lady Linda Willis and Pastor Garland and First Lady Farida. I just want to thank you and I, I just love you and I want to be, to be able to tell you it is a privilege to minister this morning at this 830 service. And I also want, I cannot be able to honor the mother of the house. She is like my second mother. She's the one that taught me how to pray and be strong, and be consistent, and be stable. Mother, I love you, and I honor you today, in Jesus' name. For those who don't know me, my name is Pastor Lydia, and my better half is my husband, Frank Cruz. He's the one that's my pastor, my evangelist. He's my, he's my Boaz, I want to just tell you that. And he just retired from UPS, 44 years of stability in and I am just rejoicing that I have a husband who did not waver and he has his heart soul for the Lord. And I'm thankful that he led such a good example, not as a husband, but as a great dad as well. Let's give him a hand clap in Jesus' name. I just want to let you know that I do have five children. One of them lives in Florida. He's not here today, but I have five children. I think they will put it up if they can. I'm not sure. Yes? Hallelujah. That's what the Lord blessed me with to care for these five beautiful children. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, we have been attending Lighthouse Church for 28 years and have been one of the senior pastors for 20 years in this house. So we are a prodigal of this house. And pastor has taught us so much. And I thank you for that. If you, could, if you have your Bibles, can you turn with me to 1 Samuel? Chapter 1, 9 through 11. Before I read the word, I want to mention that even though the messages you will hear today are mostly directed toward mothers and mothers-to-be, know that every message deals with basic biblical principle. So be encouraged that what you hear, you can also apply it to your life. Whether you are a mother or a father, a sister or a brother, daughter or son. So let's continue to read the word. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish, anguish that she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you would indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me. And not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. And then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. Let us pray. 
Father, in the name that is above every name, name, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name, I ask that you will bless every mother today, strengthen them, and sustain them by your grace. Ignite a fresh fire in every heart today to rise up in prayer, encounter us, and mark us today. Lord, I move out of the way so that you can be able to move because your anointing is what's going to bring out the word of God because it's nothing about me but everything about you. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. If I was to title my message today, it is called Praying Mothers Arise Today. Hallelujah. Now, how Hannah said to the Lord, if you would give me to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. God is attracted to open hands. Hannah Hannah was saying, give me a son and I will give him back to you, heart and soul, body and mind, all the days of his life. In response, God gives her a son in return to God. When, you're, when your hands are open, you are ready to receive what God wants to give you. And anything you place in his hand, he will surely take care of it. Imagine if her hands was already full and her mind was elsewhere. God saw she was open to receiving and desperate for his hands to move. We need to be in a posture of receiving. There are many who are praying 10 cents prayers and expecting million dollar answers. Pray with passion. A praying mother is passionate. While she continues praying in the Lord's presence, scripture says that Eli watched her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, and though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to be drunk? Get rid of your wine. May we get to the place where we don't care how we look or what people think about us. I remember praying one time, I was just in God's presence, and I was so overwhelmed, and people were looking at me as I was driving by, and they thought probably I was drunk, but let, uh, let me tell you something about that. He, people who were looking at me, I was not drunk, I was just filled with the Holy Ghost and fire that God had poured over me. In the books of Acts, the people were laughing at the disciples, saying they were drunk from too much wine. But Peter said, these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. God is raising up those who are undignified for him. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hannah said, no, I am a woman with a broken heart. I haven't had any wine or beer. I've been pouring out my heart before the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. What Eli thought was drunkenness was simply Hannah praying fervently to the Lord. Hannah was praying in her heart, but Eli, Eli only saw her lips. That's the problem sometimes when we see people, we tend to judge them. We make accusation that is not the way it is. You have to ask and pray about everything and don't accuse anybody. Just look at them where their heart is at. God saw Hannah's heart and he knew the fervency of her prayer. He finally got it. And I could only imagine when he finally got it, the conviction of the Holy Ghost of making any accusation like that, that he, that the Lord had to deal with him as well. Do you pray fervently to the Lord? We need to be careful not to let ourselves become sluggish or complacent in our prayer time. God is a great God and we should pray to him with a zeal. God hears and honors fervent prayer. Hallelujah. Eli, Eli told her, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant the request you made of him. Hannah was persistent. She continues praying in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Tells us to pray constantly. Hannah poured out her heart before the Lord. She was compassionate about her prayer. She was passionate. Eli thought she was drunk. She was not worried about those around her as she, play, as she prayed. She knew that her prayer was between her and God. Are we consistent in our prayers? Are we passionate in our prayers? Once Eli sees the heart of this great woman, he responds with a great encouragement. May the God of Israel grant the request. 
Now he's on the level of where she's at. See, there's a spiritual battle going on for our children. We can see it going all around us. When we hear stories of child abuse, child pornography, our young people getting involved in drugs and alcohol, and the increasing of school violence, this is a battle that we as mother have a duty to fight, and our weapons are not guns and sword, but rather prayer and fasting and the word of God. This is what cause, breaks every chain and every bondage, the prayer of the word of God. If we do not open it, we don't know his promises. If we don't open it, we will not know how to raise our children and they will fall to the wayside. The world will swallow them. Why don't we choose today whom they will serve? They will serve the mighty God almighty and let the anointing guide them and direct them and what he has called them for such a time as this in the name that is above every name we will cover our children that's what the fervent prayer of a mother does for their children hallelujah 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 to God be the glory are you listening women you have so much authority you are the apple of God's eye. He made you a mother. That is a special gift that we have. So we can take action and believe that the God Almighty will never leave us nor forsake us. Now is not the hour to sit back and allow the enemy to have his way with our children. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. We need to rise up and use our weapon of prayer to push back against the kingdom of darkness and speak truth and life in Jesus' name. Somebody shout out in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A mother's job is to pray for her children while they don't have the words, understanding, or insight to pray for themselves. Young mothers who have small children, this is the time to lay hands on them and call those things as be not as though they were because this world is God is waiting to be able to snatch our children. So pray for them. Pray for the anointing. Call out that they will be pastors being raised, teachers to be raised, evangelists to be raised. They will walk in righteousness. They will walk in holiness. They will not walk at the wayside. That's what we have to do. We have to pray while they're a baby. Right when they're in their belly, we have to call those things out. Because you're going to need it. I'm going to guarantee you. As a mother, I know. I know I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't live it. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. A mother's job is to pray for her children while they don't have words. We stand in the gap praying for their salvation, gifts, and lives as moms. We, we do a lot to serve our children. That is our duty. Moms, what do you want for your children? I challenge you to pray specifically for that. Be clear with the Lord and wait on the Lord. Don't be discouraged. And Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. I want to encourage somebody today that you can't have a message until you have been in a mess. I've learned how we can try them if we haven't been tried. That is what it is. When people see my children, they tell me, we must be so proud that all your children are serving the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the power of prayer and fasting. Only God did that. I tell them to keep praying for them. Because they still go through trials. But the word tells us many are the affliction of the righteous. And the Lord delivers them of them all. Everyone sees the glory, but they don't know my story. Hallelujah. A mother's job is to pray for their children while they don't have the words, understanding, or insight to pray for themselves. We have to do what the Bible says. Pray without CC. We have to set up our children for success and not failure in the prayers of a mother, awakenings happen. When a prayer of a mother, idols are destroyed. When a mother's prayer, their dry bones are raised. Prodigals are rescued. When a mother prayer, his strongholds are broken. Circumstances are changed. Healing takes place and miracles happen to our children. So a praying mother is what we need to do. Praying mothers, arise. It is time to step up and step in. All the women in the room 
room say, I will arise in the name of Jesus. I will arise in the name of Jesus. It is time to rise up in unity and pray for our children and our neighbors' children and other nations of, of, of the children. It is time to rise up in unity and light against the darkness of this world. It is time to rise up in unity and boldly approach the throne of God and intercede on behalf of our children in the name of Jesus. Be a nail in a sure place. Hallelujah. Glory be to you. When I first came to Lighthouse Church, I remember going to prayer on a Saturday morning. And I used to sit by Mother Willis because I heard her crying and moaning and calling each of her children out and she was praying with such an anointing and I kept saying Lord I want to pray just like Mother Willis for my children and even when they were going through growing up I just remember always lifting up my children and she took me aside and she said she had told me she said if you we can pray all day and raise your uh, and call out your children's name but how much more mountains can they move if you taught them how to pray for themselves i took that at heart and i remember that that's why i was teaching my children i remember one of my children was going through it in their teenage year and i remember mother rita and she took me aside because she knows i was being weary and worried about them and she said i rebelled i was so rebel but you know what called me back was a praying mother that's how I stay. And this is, was 20 years or over 28 years ago that I remember them teaching me that. And listen, stand by women that you know are powerful in prayer that can teach you how to pray, not give you bad advice, but to teach you how to pray. Be by those mothers. Those are the strong mothers. So in Proverbs 24, 10 says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. There's a quote that says, the shorter distance between a problem and a solution is the distance between your knees and the floor. The one who kneels to the Lord can stand up to anything. Hallelujah. You can surrender without a prayer, but you cannot pray without a surrender. Hallelujah. You can fight and never win, but you never truly win without a fight. Hallelujah. We are changed by prayer. Prayer changes everything. Woo, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. It may not be your way out, but it will always be your way through. If we look at the end of verse 18, we see that Hannah is changed by prayer. In 1 Samuel 1, 18, then we, she went her way and ate something. Her face was no longer downcast. Notice that God has not yet answered Hannah's prayer. She doesn't know if God is going to give her a son, and yet her spirit is lifted. She goes her way. She finally eats something. Her face is no longer downcast. Before prayer changes anything else, prayer is meant first to change us. We can go to the Lord all day long, but if we're not right with God, he's not going to honor our prayer. We have to be right. So he's going to deal with us. It may hurt, but it's going to be a good hurt that he's going to do because he's going to honor your request in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you come before the Lord in prayer, pouring out your heart before him, you will be changed simply by spending time in his presence. God is working in your heart and life right now. He is not only wants to change others through your prayers, he wants to change you. God is working in your heart and life right now. He not only wants to change others through your prayer, he wants to change you. And so long before Hannah received an answer to her prayer, she received something even better. She finds peace. She knows that God has heard her prayer and she leaves the result up to him. There's a quote that says, don't forget God when you get what you prayed for. Who has done that? I'll be the... Sometimes we ask and we think we're all good. We're going on our merry way. And then we get another attack and we're trying to run back to him and we forgot about him. Ladies, never, never let us forget about the Lord. And when he has accomplished your request, give him more praise than ever. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. Prayer changes everything in Jesus' mighty name. And as long for before Hannah received an answer of prayer, she receives something even better. She finds peace. She knows that God has heard her prayer. She leaves it up to him, which I had read. In this case, God does answer Hannah, Hannah's prayer. 
He gives her a son, and she names him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. She brings him to the temple and gives him to the Lord in fulfillment of her vow. Hannah didn't forget God or her promise to him. In 1 Samuel 2, 1, 2 and 1, Hannah prayed and rejoiced in the Lord. She said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted up high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. When we ourselves are right with the Lord, we can then make up the hedge for our children through prayer and intercession on their behalf. We should pray for their personal salvation and God's blessing on their lives for the Lord to fill them with the knowledge of his will. I want to share something about my mom when I was younger and we were off school. There's always a, a church bell that would ring at 12 o'clock and I would see my mom drop everything and she would just walk away. And I would hear her praying, calling her children's name that were out there and just cover them and just praying for them. That's what she taught me. I'm the woman today because of my mother. She taught me to put God first above all, to carry myself as a lady. She taught me when you become a wife. She taught me when I become a mother, never, never forget your children. Always pray for them, even in their mess. That was my mother. She taught me. She died 25 years ago. And I still missed her as if it was yesterday. But the good thing that I had that I rejoiced that one day I will see her in the name of Jesus. And I can carry the legacy of what she does through my children and what she did with her children. And I thank her for, for the mothers, again, for the mothers that has taught us. God has created mothers to demonstrate his love for us, for his children. God has created mothers to demonstrate his love through us for his children. He has entrusted us with his children. So we should take pleasure in our assignment and what God has called us to do. When I became a mother, I said, Lord God, is this all that I have? But he was teaching me to take pleasure in my assignment. These are his children and we are responsible for them. There's many mothers who are not standing at their post of duty, faithful to their motherhood. God requires of us nothing that we cannot in his strength perform, nothing that is not for our own good and the good of our children. I realized after coming to the Lord that my ministry is my family. I had to learn to minister the gospel to my children. I can't preach to others and my children are left out. Your ministry starts at home. I cannot function and think I'm all that if my children don't have the Lord in their heart. In the name of Jesus, God is a God of decently and in order. That is who he is. So that's my ministry that I am very proud of in Jesus' name. God accomplishes his purpose through prayer. He doesn't have to, but he chooses to. He chooses to work in and through your prayers to accomplish his purpose. That doesn't mean God will always answer your prayer exactly the way you want him to. He may not come a minute early or a minute late, but he's an on-time God. I'll tell you that. It'll be right on time. It means something's better. It means that when you pray, you are participating with God to fulfill his purpose in your life and the in the world. I'm going to read a scripture for the mothers today, and I want you to be able to stand all the mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, adopted mothers, mothers who took children under their wings. I ask that you would stand today. Can you stand with me and arise? praying mothers this poem says when you are the neatest he is the most sufficient when you are completely helpless he is the most helpful when you feel totally dependent he is absolutely dependable when you are the weakest he is the most able when you are the most alone he is intimately present when you feel you are the least he is the greatest when you feel the most useless he is preparing you when it is the, when it is the darkest he is the only light you need when you feel the least secure he is your rock and fortress when you are the most humble he is most gracious happy mother's day to all the beautiful women god bless you and i love you and there's nothing you can do about it <laughs>